Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are back to Assassin's Creed Revelations. I am going to alt-tab out for a second just so I can see chat correctly. One feature I would love, and I think more modern games are tending to do it, and ones that are sort of designed by, um, let's say, uh, you know, bigger studios tend not to have this problem alt-tabbing out. They, they seem to run in the background pretty well. Unfortunately, uh, it doesn't mean things always work out. Um, how should I put this? Hey, Johnny, big time. Uh, it doesn't mean it always works out quite the way we intend for um, uh, for some of the older ones. Uh, I don't quite know what feature actually causes this, um, but uh, but there you have it. All right, still can't see my viewer count, unfortunately, but we will live with that. And uh, I think we'll just jump straight into the game. Apologies for those of you. I'm sure some of you will be watching this on the VOD. Um, but uh, you know what? It occurred to me Kite was here earlier and I did not shout him out. I actually feel really bad about that. Hopefully he comes back. Um, you don't see it either? Oh, the viewer count? Yeah. It's... That's fine. Um, I, I, it's funny. I, I have a... Oh, damn. So 1396 followers and... Sorry, I was at 1397 followers when I started tonight, and now I'm at 1396. So apparently between me starting Assassin's Creed Revelations and now, somebody unfollowed. Whoever unfollowed, fuck you. I'm playing what I want. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Um... Rambler146, thank you very much for the host. Auto host. Um, yeah, so hopefully we see Kite sometime tonight so I can give him the shout out that he deserved earlier. Um, and uh, and yeah, I was actually, I was going to say, despite my, my twitchy obsession with... Uh, oh, Johnny, thank you very much for that auto host as well. Um, with like viewers and follower account. The biggest thing that I do with those is I, I look at them as sort of indicators of what what people want to see. So um, in terms of Docs Gaming, thank you very much for that auto host as well. Um, so, you know, it's I, I don't think it's right to ignore this sort of stuff, but like I very clearly so I would like the stream to grow, and I would like to be successful at streaming because generally I like to do well at the things that I do, and hopefully this is not just some masturbatory exercise where I keep rambling on about things that I'm interested in, you know, uh, without any regards to what people like. But like, I don't think Twitch partnership is the, the highest good that somebody can achieve. I actually think it's supremely overrated and I realize I say this as somebody who doesn't plan on being partnered ever but then like it's not so much I try not to think of it as like sour grapes like having had the benefit of talking with some people who've been partnered it seems like you know that's just the start of the hard work um, and uh, I don't know it just it feels like um, I sort of question whether or not it's worth the effort that people put into it. Inferno Fowler, how you doing? Um, anyways, with that, uh, whether or not that is... Uh, I mean, and obviously, too, like, it's a question of talents, right? Like, I think my, ta my talents are better spent in my current job rather than entertaining online, as much as I enjoy it. Um, but I'm not entirely sure if I were to do it full-time that that would necessarily be the best use of my, my time. Anyways, let's jump into the game. We can talk about these things as uh, as they go through. I'm curious how much progress I have lost. Leah too, thank you very much for that auto host. Oh yeah, we didn't lose any progress at all. Nice. Praise the heavens. We feared we had lost our mentor to the vices of the big city. I am content with my own vices, grazie. So, what's on your mind, Ezio? Tell me more about the Templars. You call them Byzantines, but the Byzantine Empire was overthrown 60 years ago. These men are remnants of a line loyal to the cause of the last emperor, Constantine XI. Who leads them now, however? I cannot say. Capisco. I suppose it is up to me to find out. 
It's you. Where is your hook blade? My hook blade? You've never seen one? I grew up using these. Hmm. Show me how it works. All right, so we've got uh, Leia 2, Flow Fantasy, D Raven, and Pthrem. Uh, I was going to say auto hosting, but I believe Flow Fantasy gave a manual host. Uh, how are you doing, Flow Fantasy? I see you came in with some viewers. So were you streaming uh, tonight? Uh, for those of you who don't know, actually, maybe now's a good time, seeing as we're starting up a uh, seeing as we're starting up a new mission and we're at a paused moment. Uh, I should take a minute and say that Flow Fantasy, uh, I had long, so that I'd known as a viewer, and I was always very grateful um, to have them as a viewer. I was streaming earlier, yes, um, but I, I stepped out so I could pick up a book, and then um, the book was too expensive <laughs> compared to what I could get on Amazon. So I um, I headed home, I had a, a quick bite to eat, and, and uh, now we're hooked in for the rest of the day. Um, but anyways, I wanted to take a minute and mention Flow Fantasy as a streamer because I have long taken, you know, I've long taken Flow Fantasy sort of for granted as a viewer. Um, but uh, it's worth mentioning uh, there. There's some content to be watching there uh, as well. Uh, now he is. I know Flow Fantasy through Elkanu's channel, so he is another French caster, another very good French caster, I might add. Uh, so it's always a little bit trickier to um, to try and uh, let's say you know, motivate some people to, to come through and, um, and, uh, um, you know, and watch streams in another language, but definitely Elkanu and people I found through Elkanu's channel have, have given a really great insight in terms of the, the quality of broadcasts that are sort of outside of my, my circle of competence language wise. And they really do hold up, uh, without the, um, even without necessarily understanding everything that's, that's being said. So, um, and then, of course, we've got Johnny Big Time in here. He's gotten definitely gotten a shout out, and I don't want to spend too much time on the on the load up because I know we've got some people coming uh, already in and ready to watch some content. But uh, again, he's got some great stuff uh, coming up for us uh, on his channel. I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, to seeing the the final product. He's already given me a couple of previews, uh, but he's another exceptionally entertaining caster. And and like I said, I, I actually gave an analogy with. Um, with Tuesday Gray. I think for Johnny, it's really a question. I don't know when, um, but I really think that one day in the future, I'm going to be hoping that he remembers me when he is uh, certainly in another sphere. It's a little bit like Jess, right? Which is, I know I'm never going to hit Jess's numbers, um, but she always has a little bit of time for me. And I think I'm going to be hoping that I, I reach that same stage with Johnny, because I think as long as he wants to, uh, as long as it wants to be casting, you will continue to grow, and you only need to watch that channel to see why. But, anyways, there are my two shoutouts for you. Sorry, I can't do the shoutout command right now because uh, every time I alt tab out, the audio goes away, and uh, I'd rather just jump on with the the game. So. So apparently, there's more about Yusuf. Or is it just telling me that? Yeah, we've already got all this information, so. Think of the hook blade as an extension of yourself, Ezio. Hold shift midair to extend your reach and grab a nearby ledge. Okay. I hope that was right. <laughs> oh, it's all good, Johnny. I know we were talking about... Um, I know we were talking about um, typos earlier today. I know I missed the one earlier, but I didn't want to. Uh, 
I didn't want to get think lost. I cannot make this one? Didn't break a sweat. <laughs> Press shift in mid-air before performing a lamp turn to execute a long jump. Okay. Oops. <laughs> um. Okay, let's try that again. Nice. How did I find the end of Amnesia? Um, it's good. I, um, like I said, I, uh... Um... Oh, Jesus. Okay. Damn it, game! Another uh, animus piece missed. Um, so I mean, I think the thing about Amnesia Machine for Pigs for me is that it's definitely one that I find more interesting story-wise. Um, I think one of the challenges that I run into it with is um, I sort of get where they're trying to go with the story, and I think it's, it's an it, it's a it's an interesting story. Although I'm not entirely sure, I kind of agree with the. I think the point that they're trying to make, if that makes sense. Watch and but it's a fun ride. We call um, this a hook and run. Nope. Sprint at your opponent, and just as you reach him, use the hook blade to slip by. Okay, run towards an assassin, hold shift to perform a hook and run. Harika! Um, but yeah, like I said, I mean, the main reason why I did, uh, main reason why I did Amnesia Machine for Pigs was mostly to be, to show people that story and, and give them the experience which maybe they had missed on their own simply because I know it's a bit of a maligned, um, entry in, uh, in the, the series. The standard Ottoman hook blade has two parts, you see, the hook and the blade. So you can use one or the other. An elegant design. How about the bigger challenge? Hmm? Va bene, let's go. Um, I think it is Inferno Fowler. I usually use Twitter more to like broadcast stuff out rather than do um, do individual exchanges. Ezio is now a proud owner of an Ottoman hook blade and needs a bit of training to master it. Training uh, Yusuf is more than happy to provide. And I need to climb the tower in under 60 seconds. So I'm probably going to fail this one, but... I'll put it to you this way, Inferno. If I, um... If it's something I needed to enable, Having I definitely fun? didn't make any, um... I definitely didn't make any special effort to uh, enable That's it. That's right. Let the hook blade do the work. No! <laughs> Not quite my intended move, but there you have it. <laughs> this is what I was talking about earlier in terms of um, how like it for most of the um most of the game it actually does uh it does a good um oh god i'm not gonna make the i'm not gonna make the challenge now having fun that's right let the hoop blade do the work oh god i'm so slow um <laughs> All right, screw it. So I think the idea here is I can't do any fast moves to the side, but let's um, let's just desync and start again. Oh, you did tweet me like a uh, a um, a public tweet or a DM. All right. 
Once more. <laughs> Having fun? That's right. Let the hook blade do the work. Throw yourself into it. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah, so, um, talking about, uh, all right, I might have missed it. It's been a pretty busy couple of weeks at work, so I, I again, I tend to, um, I tend to be pretty ignorant. I'm, I'm actually really bad at social media. I think most people have figured out, but I'll, I'll try and follow up uh, if I can um, after the cast. Um, but um, having fun. But yeah, so this is kind of what I was talking about. How like the controls are are built in such a way that the majority of the time it makes That's a lot right. of the really cool it's stuff that you see in uh, Assassin's Creed really effortless. And then every once in a while, kind of the intuitive ways the controllers are set up make you do something really boneheaded, like jump off the side of a of a tower. Um, and I'm a little, I'm pretty good at discovering the boneheaded ways of doing things. So. Yay! Welcome to Constantinia, Ezio. The crossroads of the world. Many generations of men have ruled this city, but they have never subdued her. She always bounces back. It seems a fine place to call home. It is. Brace you to the bottom. Synchronize with the viewpoint. Hang on. Oh, right. Eagle view. Uh, no, I don't even have a cam in Inferno Fowler. This is one of the things, too. I think one thing I love about sort of the advent of AAA game... Oh, God. I love the fact that you can sort of see... It looks like you could sort of see little... Oh, no, those are seagulls. Never mind. Um... One of the nice things about AAA games, like where you have these massive teams working on stuff, um, I love the fact that they take opportunities to sort of just show you these really great vistas. It's one of my favorite things about modern game design. Like, don't get me wrong, like it's great that there's indie stuff which is sort of pushing the envelope as far as... Um, as far as uh, gameplay and that is concerned, but I really do love, like, you know, how... Who could have imagined, let's say, you know, 10 years ago, being able to see um, Constantinople around the time of the Renaissance rendered this way? Um, and then, of course, being able to... Uh, I don't think that was the intended effect. <laughs> Try that again, maybe? Oh, there we go. Then being able to leap over the edge. Um... All right, why is the game tabbing out? Sorry guys, I'm just gonna take a quick look and see what's causing that. Lady Dow, how are you doing? I am impressed, Yusuf. My brothers in Roma would like this. Just give credit where it is due. Yusuf, Chabu Puri again. Uh, huh? An attack on two fronts, Galata and the Grand Bazaar. Every day, the same bad news. How is your appetite for swordplay? I do what I must. Good man. Word has reached Yusuf that the Templars are attacking two separate assassins and follow Yusuf while he conceives a plan. And apparently I need to perform a zipline assassination if I can.
One thing I do like about the hook blade is it uh, it does make when speed a little bit quick, running, or quicker. An assassin must take to the air. Watch. Templar scout. And another there. Watch this. Assassin! Help! I'll admit, I, I really wish I was as athletic as this <laughs> Lady Dow. I just don't think I'd have, ever have a hope of, uh, of pulling off company. these kinds of acrobatics. I'll head to the bazaar. You stay here. Do you see that tower? See, si. the Galata Den. Evet. Hey, Black Leather. I what? can't be in two places at once, but with you here, I don't have to be. Hi there, Ascale. The assassins. <laughs> Johnny Big Tongue can move around like this, no problem. See, this is the thing. Johnny says that the problem is, is that. Johnny has always been so full of surprises that I actually need to take his word at this. <laughs> yeah. I sort of think it is possible that he might actually be a real life dynamite. Oh my god, thank you very much for that host. I will give dynamite his due you, in a minute. Is Yusuf with you? An attack in this city demands his attention. What is our situation? We beat back the vanguard, but they are sure to send more troops. Are your men ready for another fight? They are now. All right. Perfect opportunity. Well, that was a strange thing. Couldn't type in the box for a bit. Oh, sorry to hear that, Inferno Feller. Uh, if anybody else is having that problem, please, please uh, write that in chat. Kappa. Uh, all right, we have got Dynamike YT in the channel, folks. Uh, I did host him after the first round of Assassin's Creed, so for those of you who are coming back, uh, you probably already know where he's from. But Dynamike has a lot of things going for him, I'd say. Uh, first of all, he is incredibly kind to me in his channel. I got no less than two shoutouts today. Um, and again, he certainly has a way with words. He certainly knows how to uh, how to make a guy feel good. Um, but he himself has a really wonderful cast, and he has been doing um, Dark Souls, which is of course a a, a very beloved um, game here on this channel. Um, I think he mentioned that at least me playing Dark Souls two kind of pushed him a little bit over the edge to take on that uh, that terrible uh, terrible terrible um, task, <laughs> but. Uh, there's a couple of things about um, Dynamite's playthroughs. Actually, I think my mic might be a little bit hot. Let's see if I can... Um, I'll actually need to work on this a little bit because I want to be clear, but I have a feeling I peek out a little bit more than I than I should. Anyways, uh, Dynamite has been doing a couple of really great things with um, Dark Souls. Number one, I believe this is his first playthrough blind, and he is doing exceptionally well. I can actually remember a couple of points that gave me quite a bit of trouble on the game the second time I was playing it, the time that I did it on stream, and he's just kind of breezed through it. Um, but second of all, I, he does a much better job of, I mean, I think one of the things I have going for me is I tend to be, if not stoic, then maybe at least a little more detached from um, 
from the kinds of uh, you know the kinds of uh, games that I play. And I think Dynamite Dynamite is maybe not one of the ah! kind of casters, but he does. Um, he definitely has a much better he does a much better job of sort of engaging and sort of um how do i put this he he has a lot more energy uh in terms of his playthroughs so in addition to actually being quite good at dark souls which maybe doesn't surprise me um but i'd say relative to the fact that i know it's his first time playing i was actually very pleasantly surprised to see how quickly he's gotten through the through the game um, but on top of that, he is just such a great person. He, you really get an idea of his personality. Like, I mean, maybe he's a serial killer in real life, but um, certainly on cast, he is, he is an absolutely outstanding guy. Very positive. Um, good, clean, like he's actually one of the people I would say is just pure good, clean fun on cast. Uh, he's somebody I, I don't get to host very often just because of the differences in time, but at least in terms of the times that we do casts. But he really... Um, it's a really welcoming environment that he has, and he's somebody, you know, much like Johnny and Jesse and people like that. I, uh, they're people who I really enjoy um, shouting out just because in the end it's, you know, anytime, like if I were to say, it's like, okay, guys, I'm like going, I'm going to be going away from streaming for like a month or so. Um, you know, these are people who I would feel really comfortable just putting them on auto host and making them the only things that I hosted. Um, purely from the fact that, um, you know, I, I know kind of I'm putting viewers in, in good hands when I when I do that. So uh, I think a lot of you already know Dynamite and certainly anybody, I don't know if Dynamite has got the permission from the bot yet, but if somebody could do a quick SO Dynamite, uh, or if you guys just click on his name and hit the follow button, you definitely uh, will be doing me a favor. And more importantly, you will be setting yourself up for a bit of success when you... Um, when you do uh, check it out. Did a stream the other day for the first time, got 34 views at the same time. Don't know how good that is, but we enjoyed it. 34 views is a very good, uh, if you've got 34 concurrent viewers, that's actually very, uh, very good. All right, sorry about that, Dynamite. I think I need to, to kick the bot. What game were you streaming, uh, Dynamite, or uh, Inferno? No problem, Dynamite. It's uh, a pale comparison of what you pulled off, but, um, I'm trying. I'm trying to get better at uh, getting to the gameplay as quickly as I can. Okay. Um, so apparently, I'm putting de defending units cannot be placed until a rooftop has been unlocked by a leader. Locked rooftops have place a leader by moving a cursor across. The ah, I get it. Okay. Let's put this. Is stand there. Hold there. Defend that area. Hold that point for me. Make your stand there. Looks like I don't have any more morale for this, so... Make your stand there. Barricades can be placed in the street to slow the tempers advance. Press Q to bring up the unit wheel and select the barricade. All right. Halo 5 and H1Z1 next. Cool. So it seems to make sense to just, you know, put the, um, put the ranged units as close as I can to, uh, or like put up a barricade and, uh, and then just get a bunch of ranged units to kind of pound down on these guys. Make your stand there. Welcome back yourself, Vanguard Master. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Unlock another rooftop, press Q to bring up... Maybe I don't want to unlock another rooftop. Maybe I just want to keep my uh, crossbowmen where... Alright, looks, looks like it's going to make me. Make your stand there. Riflemen are strong against armored enemies. Press Q to open the unit wheel and select the rifleman unit. 
All right. Take your stand there. Secure that point. Again, ideally, I want a bunch of um, crossbowmen to take out the weak units point. first. Probably good for another barricade. Oh, or we can upgrade the barricade. Uh, move a cursor over the Templar group and press T to fire a cannon shot, then hold, release T for cannon salvo in that location. Okay. I think that's... Make your stand there. Should probably put a rifleman here as I well. I need you to hold that point. Hold there. Make your stand there. Make your stand there. The cursor over an enemy and press left mouse button to... So yeah, so apparently I just don't get cannon shots. This is definitely, I was going to say, like, I'm not maybe one normally for tower defense stuff, but this is actually pretty fun. Um, I don't know how compelling this is to watch on, uh, that point. in chat, but. Um, Defend that area. Let's put some guys down here. Oh, well. All right, not a problem at all, Dynamite. I know you've been doing a lot of casting tonight. I really appreciate you stopping by. I definitely appreciate your host. And uh, we will catch you next time. Oh, well, so these guys just get pounded when they... Uh... I really need to find a way to get those... Uh... Oh, there we go. Yeah, so... GTA 2, that is definitely not one that, um, it's definitely not one that usually comes up a lot, but I think it's a pretty solid one. 85% sync, well, what could I, oh, it's because I lost, I think it's because I, because um, uh, I lost three assassins. Definitely appreciate it, Inferno. Um, I'll get back to you on Twitter if I can find your message. And uh, I'll try to be a little bit better at responding where I can. Sorry, guys, I got a pie. So I'm just going <laughs> to... I'm going to swallow, take a drink, and then we'll be back to real casting. Oh, no, I get it, Inferno Fowler. I actually... I moved from Vancouver to Ottawa, so I have a three-hour time difference. There's a lot of people who actually came into the the cast and, uh, you know, they just once upon a, you know, they, they got uh, they got into the cast at one set of time, uh, kind of one set of, um, of uh, hours, and uh, then I went and changed them on them, so I know exactly. Am I eating a whole pie now? Yep. <laughs> Just a personal size pie. All right.
Sure, Inferno File. I think the difference here, though, is that with a three-hour time, if I get moved three hours ahead, I tend to notice the hours at which I cast it. I will be with Yusuf at the Grand Bazaar Den. Take a ferry across the Halic. It's the fastest way to the peninsula. I think most of the um, either European or uh, or British um, viewers tended to prefer my uh, oops tended to prefer my uh, <laughs> my Vancouver hours. Oh my God, Inferno Fowler! Yeah, it's definitely definitely late. Oh, goodness. oof. Stop that. Oh, wait. I want the loot. It is currently 1041. There's a side of me that kind of wonders what it's like to work on a game like this. Like, somebody has sat down and they've made these rooftops. And probably somebody else made the textures for them and such. Um, it's just... Um, it's a bit staggering to consider how much goes into making a game like this. Get over here, damn it! Do I have many UK viewers? Not as many as I used to. <laughs> um, but there's a couple... I also have some people from Poland. Um, we have a couple of, from, couple from Sweden, couple from Denmark. Um, actually, here's a fun one to do, everybody. Who, where are you from? Who are you? What are you up to? How dare you be here? <laughs> uh, let's do a roll call. Who is, uh, who's from where in this chat? I'm Canadian. And half Australian, actually. That's why Johnny Big Time had to hear me rant about Gallipoli all through his Battlefield 1 player. Oof. Not so good. I was kind of hoping to, um... Oof! Never mind! I was kidding! Um... I was kind of hoping to, um, to catch on the ledge, but there we go. We've got at least one American. Vanguard Masters from Canada, play video games, go to school and work. You are here because you ran across System Shock's channel due to the Rambler hosting. That's correct. Actually, I was going to say, Vanguard Master has been really good at, at watching my channel, even though um, he isn't always able to make the, uh, <laughs> the grand strategy casts. Um, it's something I really appreciate, because I know Rambler's audience is very strategy-focused. And obviously, since I moved to this newer PC, I've, um, I've had more... Uh, I've, I've kind of had a little bit more diversity in terms of my... Um, in terms of my... Uh, uh, like my um, my choice of games, although hopefully not um, not unpleasantly so, because I know some people like I know people really liked the L.A. Noir playthrough. All right, the Galata Den is now secure, but Yusuf has not returned from his fight. Go to the Imperial North Den near the bazaar to find him. Full synchronization. Do not create any conflict in the Imperial North District. Okay. Come meet my new friends! Run! 
fight like a man late for his own wedding. See, si. by about 25 years. I was too late to save the bazaar then, unfortunately. But now that my army has doubled in size, we'll take it back together. This way! When the Templars take control of a district, they flaunt their presence. Hanging banners, extorting the merchants, is a constant battle to keep them at bay. And they rub our noses in every victory. Oh, for God's sake. Uh, so Inferno Fowler, I am a... I'm an economist. I'll let everybody else speak for their, uh... Their role. And I agree, Vanguard Master. I mean, I understand the some... Templars take control um, of the district. They flaunt their presence. Hanging banners, extorting the merchants. It's a constant battle to keep them at bay. And they rub our noses in every victory. They are quite bold. Why does the Sultan tolerate this? Sultan Bayezid is far away, Ezio. Warring with his son Selim, many Fersa northwest of the city. He has been away for years, at least since the earthquake, and maybe even before. He is blind to all this turmoil. Ah, but your eyes are open, see? Hem de fault, Ashikibi. Believe it. Too many to engage directly. Uh, I am not confident a smoke bomb will help us here. Smoke bomb? Ezio, it's time you Italians joined the 16th century. These do not obscure. They distract. You see? They can't resist. Let's move. You Actually, are full of surprises today. I forgot Crafting to ask. explosives is a new hobby. One we borrowed from the Chinese and have taken to with great passion. You will have to teach me. Uh, who is the mentor here, Ezio? I'm beginning to wonder. <laughs> I forgot to ask you, Vanguard Master, uh, what, uh, if you don't mind me asking, what's your specific role in the uh, Canadian forces? I, uh, once upon a time, had an application in uh, where I was probably going to wind up as a communications research operator. That sadly didn't turn out. I was a little disappointed by that, but I moved on to my own academics. Although social sciences rather than the hard sciences like yours. I suppose with the geology, it's very hard science. <laughs> Your turn. Make me proud. Throw a cherry bomb into the street to attract the guards to the source of the sound. Press Q to select a weapon. There's the bomb. Hold E to aim your bomb manu manually. Release E to throw the bomb. There they go. Mars officer, naval reserve, maritime surface. Oh, cool. Hurry, we're nearly there. I think Inferno has a business now, if I'm not mistaken. This is another of our many dens, taken by Templars, as you can see. Somewhere <laughs> oh, I was making a crappy joke about Templar rocks. But <laughs> kill him, then climb the tower and light their signal fire. This warns the Templars that it is time to pack up and go. Bene, you create a distraction. I will send them home. So all the assassins are able to create, uh, Ezio, 
over here. Hello, Trippy Tube. Yep, Assassin's Creed Revelations. Uh, we actually had a couple people request this, but. Whenever the Templars commandeer one of our dens, they leave a captain in charge. Search the area carefully, and you might see him strutting about like a peacock. Uh, we actually have. Use those legendary senses of yours, Ezio, and scan the streets. You'll find our target. Um. Director and um, director and CEO, their both roles exist in uh, in Canada and the U.S. Although it depends on what you're specifically referring to. Did I just start? Uh, I've been casting for about forty five minutes, um, and we actually were casting a little bit earlier today as well. So the trick here is it's fairly straightforward to kill this guy, but it is not straightforward to um, to not create a, a ruckus. See how well we do. Fall, damn you, fall! What's the difference? Um, well, it again, it depends on the context. So, for instance, um, a director could actually be a role in a... Uh, a director could be a, um, a role in a... Um, in a um, like an investment firm or something like that and in that particular case um, it would refer to a uh, that's that's not even necessarily like a, a it's not like a, an executive role uh, like the CEO would be um, whereas a director of a publicly traded company could refer to something like the board of directors at which point they're sort of the representatives of the shareholders. They're sort of the ones who are actually responsible for hiring and or firing the CEO. Um, oops. Let's see if I can... I'm trying to keep this stealth thing if I can. Um, oh, come on. I bet I can do a long jump here. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, in the end, too, like, for um, for a company that isn't publicly traded, um, you can sort of... You can sort of take whatever title you want. <laughs> um, I think this guy's gonna camp me to death. I might just have to... Oh, nope. Oh. Where's that one from? Assassinate him! Oh, for fuck's sake! Don't create any conflict in the Imperial North District, but I got my target! Alright, so it seems like I have to basically kill everybody, otherwise... Um... Otherwise, I, uh, I fail it. Yeah, not a textbook version of the um, of the mission, but there you have it. A 
I'm seeing very strange activity in the Animus. Oh? The CPU should be fairly idle, but the system monitor is spiking regularly, sometimes as high as 85%. Is it serious? I'm not sure. Desmond's signs are stable. Well, if there isn't a problem, let's not try to fix anything. Fair enough. God, I need a drink. That's really cool, Inferno. Um, incidentally, guys, how are the audio levels? Like, is the microphone going hot too much, or is the game uh, game overwhelming anything, or is everything Desmond decent? Think about this. What if I went with you? With me? Where? I did not trippy too. It could work, just for a while, until I found a way out. Another body, maybe, or a, I don't know. I just. I don't want to be here anymore. That's... That's not going to happen. I'm sorry. Jeff, no. thank you very much. And welcome, by the way. Yeah, it's great to see I you here again. Chance. Thanks, Inferno. And I wasted it. I know you're my lady is straight. You would have typed hello sooner, but as soon what as you joined, Lydia jumped on the keyboard. Desmond and Lucy. I mean, closer than friends. Uh, well, there was the occasional misty-eyed moment, but... Uh... She liked him, Bill. That's what she told me. Hmm. Interesting. That's it? Just interesting? I spent a lot of time training each of them when they were younger. She was a remarkable woman. I just find this whole situation... quite sad. Uh, sad? Are you finally getting soft on us, Bill? So TrippyTube, he is uh, 16, so he is one of the previous people they were using to access memories to. He, in the real world, has actually uh, committed suicide, but he put his consciousness into the Animus machine, and we are currently sort of, we're trapped there ourselves. And so he's a character that we're encountering uh, inside, uh, inside the Animus. Uh, and yeah, Jeff, I was going to say, I know your milady is streaming right now, so I appreciate you stopping by. Um, I quite like... Uh, by the way, guys, I'm just going to caution you. Every time I move my mouse, I sometimes get highlights on the screen. In Crisis, welcome. Good to see you again. Um, I'll sometimes like see it mouse over on something like a timeout. So if somebody's got a... Uh, oh, <laughs> thanks, Jeff. Um, if somebody does get like timed out or something like that, I'll, I'll fix it. I might have to alt-tab out for it, but I don't think it'll be a problem because it's a pretty hard target to hit, but I am noticing that it is actually, uh, like, my mouse is actually interacting with things inside the, um, inside the, the Windows environment, so. Cthulhu Clan, welcome. Yeah, Dynamite was going up. Jesse Quill! Jesus Christ, 43, what were you doing? by the Turks has welcomed me as one of its own. The assassins here, led by an affable fighter named Yusuf, take great pride in their city. A place as diverse and colorful as one could imagine. But it is a troubled city too. A rebellious faction of Byzantine Templars still fights to retain influence. And their recent attacks have delayed my search for the Masyaf Keys. But this will not last. As soon as I am able, I will begin looking for Nicolo Polo's former trading post in search of clues that will bring me nearer to the Masyaf Keys. All right, I've got some welcomes to say here. So, uh, we have got Agito Atsuki. Jeff DeHef, Cthulhu Clan, and Trippy Tube and Eden Crisis were here. We Ricky go? Guitarist, welcome. We have won the day and recovered that den, but we lost a few friends in this fight. So much death for so little gain. You have some experience recruiting new assassins, do you not? More than a little. The people here are quite sick of these Templar attacks. Can you Alchemy, turn on thank your you very much for that host, my friend. A few more recruits? See, but these den will not do for training them. Not this soon. 
A good point. Speak with one of my men in Galata after you are finished. He can help you begin their training. Drizito Erden, 69, thank you very much for coming along with that raid as well. And you'd be so proud of me, Chalk. You made progress and you weren't super scared, just jump scares sometimes. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things I never feel too bad about jump scares just because it's, you know... I always feel it's a little, um, it's a little bit of a cheat. Um, but guys, we got some great hosts here. So, uh, El Canoe, Jesse Quill. Um, we're actually also getting some hosts from other people as well. So let's get some introductions out of the way as I'm running through... Uh, the game world. So we have got Jesse Quill. I'll, I think the majority of people who are watching are going to be familiar with um, are going to be familiar with her uh, playing Resident Evil 7. Now she's actually gotten me a couple of Resident Evil games, which I've put a bit of an effort into playing. Uh, however, I am finding the controls a little difficult, and I realize this is one of the features of the game. And everybody's like, it makes the game more scary if you if you can't control it properly. Um, I'm less convinced by that, however, I do think there is a logic to the controls, which I will eventually get around. Um, but uh, I definitely know Resident Evil 7 is something that I'd be very interested in playing at some point in the future. And uh, not to be outdone, we have got Elkanu, who has uh, actually finished uh, Resident Evil 7 as well. So let me tell you about these two casters, and uh, I should give a couple of other shout-outs too, because there's such a large number of people, and I feel it would be nice if I could, um, some of these other people who have uh, hosted me, to maybe give them a little bit more profile than um, my, sort of my natural viewership would, uh, would give them. So, uh, let's start... Um, you know, what, I'll start with Jess. Uh, so obviously a lot of you folks already know her. Uh, she's an absolutely outstanding caster. She's somebody who does a great diversity of sort of topics and genres on her stream. She's done quite a bit of creative lately. Uh, she's done some programming streams. She has done some, um, she's done cooking in the past. Um, one of the things that I like, she's actually very good at building communities, and I think a lot of you know from her Patreon and from her Game Wisp and such, she actually does a really good job of sort of giving people, um, giving people rewards for this, and she actually streams the creation of those rewards. Um, I think one of the other things, I always talk about the diversity, and I always talk about what a sweetheart she is as a person, but one other indicator of interest that you can actually get is I know the individuals who have... I don't care if my need is <laughs> your need is much greater. Is a man not entitled to the sweat of his brow, lady? Um, but um, one of the things that I think is also worth mentioning on Jess is I actually know the people who have like stolen some of her ideas for their specific cat. And I say stolen the ideas specifically because it's a very transparent. Um, it is very transparent effort of like I'm taking this idea without any elaboration. And she made a small suggestion as to sort of knowing what was going on here, and they completely backtracked on it, which I thought was really funny. Um, but uh, as they say, imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. And one of the nice things about this is you know that usually when somebody tries to take an idea like that is never as good as the original. So um, I suppose if Jess's stuff is good enough for people to try and lift, um, it's worth you checking out. And uh, hopefully, um, hopefully you will agree. Um, though maybe not so much that you uh, <laughs> you try to take it for yourself. <laughs> All right. Well, this is not quite what I'm intending to do. Let's just get out of here. Let me go. Um, not to be outdone, we have got El Canu in the channel. Uh, El Canu is an absolutely outstanding French caster. I think Flow Fantasy either was in here or is in here. Um, so both of them are really good French casters. El Canu I found playing a game that I was interested in picking up myself, and all of the English casters had made it seem very dull. Um, so I think one of the things that I really love about El Canu's channel is he's got a, he's absolutely mastered sort of showing a game in its best light. I really enjoy watching him, um, I really enjoy watching him play any game that he does, even if the game isn't particularly good. Uh, and I say this because, again, he's one of the fairest viewers I, or uh, kind of players of a game that I've seen. Like, even if the game is not an especially good one, he will absolutely show you everything there is to see about it. Um, and I need to appreciate that some games I don't, I'm not necessarily interested in purely because it's not my sort of thing. 
and um, I think um, I think one of the things that I love the most about seeing you know, seeing Elkanu play games is, um, I sort of think, like, I, I'm probably never going to wind up, like, making a game that people buy or something like that. Um, but I know if I if I did, I would give it to Elkanu without question. And not just because, you know, I really like his, his stuff and because I think he's a, you know, he's a, he's a good guy and he, he has a good cast, although that's certainly very true. Um, but one of the things that I love the most about being able to... Um, so I think there was a blacksmith near there, but I feel like that should have already... Um, I feel like that should have already... Uh, it should already be on the map. Yeah, we'll see. Um, but like one of the things that I, I really... One of the reasons why, if I were to develop a game, I would want to give it to Elkanu is, regardless of the stream size, although uh, Elkanu has been growing, and it's, it's really excited me to see him grow, because he really is a very talented caster, um, I would do it because I'd know that, you know, even... So even if I don't enjoy the game that Elkanu is playing, I get a very good idea of what it's about. And I think that's really... Whether it's a caster um, trying to find an audience, or whether it's a developer trying to find, you know, their player base. I think the best somebody can ask is to to be given the chance, to sort of, to, to have the chance to entertain you. And, um, I mean, Elkanu could hate the game that I was playing, and yet he would still put it through its paces, he would show everything there was to, to be seen about that game. And, um... And, you know, the, the game would rise or fall based on its merits. And there's very few casters who I can really say that about. Um, there's a lot. It's very easy for casters to sort of focus on things that they enjoy. So I play a lot of strategy games because I like strategy games. Um, and certainly I get nothing but the impression that Elkanu plays games that he enjoys. Um, but I think I have a tremendous respect for his ability to go for a game and uh, even if it's not a very good game or even if it's a game sort of outside of his circle of competence, um, to see him, to see him be able to, uh, you know, to to sort of um, how do I put this? Uh, play play something that play something like this that, um, and still be able to sort of show it in a way that somebody who is interested in the game. Um, oh wow. I didn't know about stalking. Ah! That's a really cool feature. Um, but yeah, I think just being able to see Elkanu cover games like... Um, uh, cover games that don't necess aren't necessarily the sort of thing that I might play myself. Um, I... Uh, I don't know. I, I really um, I really like it. It's it's something that kind of pushes me to try and be a bit better of a caster. I'm really sorry. I kind of I kind of screwed up that shout out, but he's uh, he's a great guy. And again, it's um, it's definitely worth checking out, even if you're not a French speaker. Um, who else was it? Uh, we've got Dynamite hosting us now. I think Dynamite is in lurk mode right now, so he's not going to be able to to defend himself from all these things I'm about to say with him. But he's actually doing uh, Dark Souls right now, and for somebody who's first coming to the game, he is doing an excellent job of playing it. He is breezing through some places that I struggled with the second time I played the game. So he's actually very good at playing Dark Souls. It's high energy playthrough. He's a really friendly guy, a good clean cast actually. So one of the things like, and I'm terrible for this, right? Like it's easy to rely on like profanity or crudity for, um, for humor. Um, but Dynamite is actually one of the people who can pull off um, a clean cast and still make it super entertaining. Um, there's a lot of clips that I've actually snapped of him uh, playing Dark Souls, which has been a lot of fun to, to check out. So I definitely recommend him as well. Uh, he only gets a shorter shout out because I, I shouted it out, him out so recently. So uh, hopefully you guys, um, hopefully you guys, you don't take don't take that as a um, as a uh, an indication that he's. Um, you know, sort of a, a second to um, to Jess or, or Elkanu. And then finally, we've got Johnny Big Time, another 
excellent uh, streamer. Actually, so a, a fun story, guys. Some of you may recall a time when I was on a team. There's a command which will indicate the team if you, uh, <laughs> for some of those of you who've been there for a while. Um, and you used to know sort of where everything sat because there's, you know, there's a, a wrong way of running a team is to sort of kind of force everyone to kind of pretend to like each other. And so one of the ways that you could sort of figure out what I really thought of a caster would be how much of a shout out they got. <laughs> Thanks, Jesse Quill. Um, so it would used to be like, you know, you'd hear something like what I'm about to say about Johnny Big Time. And then it would be sort of like, oh yeah, there's X. They're a streamer on this team. And everybody would know what that meant. It was like, I have fulfilled my obligation and that is it. <laughs> Um, so Johnny Big Time, uh, speaking of Dynamite, speaking of Dark Souls playthroughs, D Dynamite, uh, sorry, not Dynamite, Johnny Big Time is another exceptional caster hosting us right now, and he is somebody who, um, he's somebody who, um, you know, I, again, is just pure entertainment wall to wall. One of the most consistent entertainers I've, I've seen as well, like just in terms of how regularly he casts, how entertaining he is for his cast, the quality of the gameplay, everything about it, he's getting better and better all the time. His channel is growing, and uh, I, I must clip like I must clip him like once or twice every time he streams. He's that good. Um, so he's another exceptional entertainer. So I know it's been like the the love in for the last little while, but these are all people who have helped me sort of build up a little bit of an audience. You know, they're the reason why I kind of keep streaming. And actually, Johnny Big Time is one of the uh, Johnny Big Time is actually one of the people who um, who's the reason why I'm playing Revelations right now. But uh, again, there's uh, I guess it was four people who I talked about who are really wonderful casters, who are definitely people who I like to watch as much as I can. And I think you guys would really enjoy and hopefully you guys have gotten a little bit of an idea in terms of why um, why I like them. All right, the Battle of Baphis fought, uh, fought just 50 kilometers to the east of Constantinople in 1301 marks the first recorded mention of the Ottomans in world history. Led by a man called Osman, this modest army of Turks won a stunning victory over their Byzantine opponents, routing them from the battlefield and driving them north to the edge of the sea by Marmara. The defeat shocked the complacent Byzantines, who had already been struggling for decades to maintain a grip on the region. Over the next 150 years, the strength and the size of the Ottoman Empire grew practically unhindered. Winning victory after victory, the Ottoman Sultan slowly but surely engulfed the regions once controlled by the mighty Byzantine Empire, first in Anatolia, now modern Turkey, and then in Thrace, present-day Hungary, Greece, Macedonia, Albania, etc. Over time, the Ottomans' increasing presence in the Eastern Europe began to worry the West, and most especially irked the Vatican, whose hatred of the Eastern Orthodox Church now seemed a mere quarrel over semantics in light of the encroaching Islamic Empire. But when push came to shove, even the Pope could not be bothered to send aid to the ailing Byzantine Empire, whose empire, by the middle of the 15th century, contained only the capital Constantinople and its surrounding villages. Then at last, in 1453, after 54 days of fighting, Constantinople fell to the Ottomans too. Led by their sultan, 21-year-old Mehmet II, the Janissaries poured through a breach in the wall into the city. Upon entering the city center, the victorious sultan headed straight to the renowned Hagia Sophia, reached the ancient cathedral, he fell to the ground and sprinkled some raw earth over his turban as a sign of respect. Eager to relocate the capital to the shores of the Bosphorus, Mehmet's first order of business was to rebuild Constantinople, now rendered as Constantinye in Turkish, and colloquial, co colloquially called Istanbul by many of its residents. As a model city of, cosmo of a cosmopolitan empire, in the decade of, after the conquest, he was careful to preserve what he could of the old Byzantine capital while imbuing everything with a modern Ottoman meaning. In this, Sultan Mehmet must be considered a success, for in little more than a few decades, the population expo exploded from a paltry 40,000 citizens to well over 100,000 Mus Muslims, Christians, Jews, and Romani. People flocked to the city from east and west, drawn to the capital, bursting with commercial life in the heart of an empire that valued religious and cultural diversity, not only by tradition, but by rule of law. Am I looking forward to this year's Assassin's Creed? I don't know what this year's Assassin's Creed is going to be out. I actually hope I can catch up with all of the um, the existing ones. Um, Istanbul, but not Constantinople. Um, and uh, what was I going to say about... Um, so... There's something about that. Oh, yeah. Uh, interesting little bit of trivia. Um, Crusader Kings 2 ends in 1453, the fall of Constantinople. 
I believe that is the one, uh, Albadon, and welcome. It's rumored to be in Egypt very close to the modern day. Um, it's actually kind of interesting that they would choose modern day for it. Um, so that must be... Uh, would that be under Nasser then? Or not that modern? All right, so let's find a blacksmith. I guess this is the closest blacksmith to the den. Could also try a bank. Actually, let's try a bank first because I know I need in income is always helpful. And the earlier you can get income, then the more uh, basically in any game, if you can get a an income generating um, either ability or a or a building early, then that's just longer for it to generate that income for you. To have to return to Animus Island to... Oh, hang on. It said one certain thing? It'd be a ways from the timeline in Assassin's Creed Syndicate, which is the Industrial Revolution London. So I'm trying to think what... What they would choose for... Why they would choose Egypt in that time period. Although, I mean, their choices have been spot on. I mean, so I know people don't like unity, but I think the choice of the French Revolution is a great... Um, renovate this income generated by renovated buildings is deposited in bank vaults. Renovating banks will increase the amount of money the vaults can hold. Oh, hang on. So the blacksmith will actually be income generating then. Um... Yeah, so I, was, I wasn't thinking straight on this. Alright, so instead, let's, let's start unlocking um, some of the more practical things, like... Uh, we'll start with a blacksmith and a tailor. Used to be a yearly series. They took 2016. I, I know that they... Um, I actually remember the announcement that they made about it. I don't necessarily think it's bad. So this is one thing that... Is it 2K? Um, I feel like it's 2K. Um, that they do very well. It's that they're not scared to actually give their franchises a rest. Because I know... Even when there's a good Assassin's Creed game that comes up, I almost always hear somebody say... Well, you know, the gameplay is getting a little tired. And it's like, well, you know, you don't need to reinvent the wheel every time you make a game, right? So, all right, let's renovate the blacksmith shop. I actually really like this idea of... So, there's a few reasons why I like this idea. I like this idea of sort of assassins being a faction, which, you know, almost kind of like the mob or something like that. You have a bunch of income-generating businesses. Um, but, uh... No, Ubisoft is not the company I'm thinking of, Agito. Um, if Assassin's Creed is a yearly franchise and they don't actually put these things on, on hold... Um, it's, it's definitely 2k I'm thinking of. But I, th I think it's actually a fairly admirable choice because, like, if you think of it right... 
So like Battlefield made a good decision saying it's like we're going to do something totally different and put out um, Battlefield 1. Um, and that's fresh. And, you know, compared to Infinite Warfare, which may or may not be a good Call of Duty game. I've never played them. Um, but the... Um, the... Uh, you know, like... The next variation on like Space Marines is has kind of been done, whereas nobody's really touched on the First World War, and I think it's a really good, um, I think it's a really good idea, uh, especially because much like this game, you know, being able to go into the history and so on and so forth. Um, I do not, I don't know. I think it motivates people to find out um, things that they may not have known about the world, and it makes it for a more rewarding experience. Um, so again, rather than, I mean, there's a lot of money to just keep pump, you know, pumping out the yearly version of each game. I mean, a lot of game studios sort of underwrite all these other games that they make by putting out that year's latest sports game. Um, but I have a lot of respect for, for companies that are willing to sort of say, it's like, let's keep this series fresh. Let's, you know, not, not wear people out on it and, uh, you know, and, uh, and be willing to, um, be willing to sort of, uh, of let it, um, let it have a, a rest so what do you think of exactly jesse what sorry i don't know what you mean um jesse quill every renaissance community needed a backsmith swords locks pans knives nails and armor were all made from metal and all needed to be shaped in addition agriculture or architectural ironwork flourished during the renaissance as blacksmiths began to apply their practical craft towards making art Right. So I think what I'll start with is um, I'll just buy some stuff and then uh, I'll use whatever money's left to um, I'll use the money to um, whatever money's left to buy more uh, already oh. to buy new businesses. I normally actually do it the other way around, which is to buy um, buy businesses first and then buy items. Oh yeah, I already blew up all my uh, all my cash. So I need something with. Mm, I prefer speed and damage where I can. So pretty much any weapon is going to do better than. So like the bearded axe actually seems to be the best. Alright. Let's do another mission. As fun as it would be to start robbing people, I think uh, I think I'm gonna hold off. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll um, I think maybe I'll I'll buy myself armor pieces. I'll maybe hold off on weapons and then um, what do I do? Yeah, I think I'll maybe buy armor and then um, I'll put all the money towards buying businesses. Again, I prefer to put my things into uh, income. Produ I prefer to put my money into income producing um, items as quickly as I can. I I kind of broke my. Um, my habit um, doing that. Sorry guys, if you can just give me a quick second here. Um, I actually don't understand. There's a, I'm trying to use Twitch mobile where I can. Um, when playing this game, just cause I don't like tabbing out, it means that the audio and all that cancels out, so. Okay, I can't seem to send anything. So 
Sorry, guys, I got to tab out for a second. Uh, where's my mouse? This is irritating, actually. I thought he was a, uh, I thought he was uh, a, um, wait a minute, it told me press tab to access something but I missed it. Sorry guys, I'm not paying attention like I should. Out of curiosity, guys, I noticed chat just went very quiet, and I don't seem to be able to send messages over Twitch. Could somebody... Oh, here we go, Tricky Dude. Sometimes you have to alt tab, it seems. Are you a compassionate man, Effendi? Can you help me? That I stole fruit from a vendor, I will not deny. But only because my hunger has trumped my honesty. Bring me the key to these chains, and I will repay you tenfold. Has been arrested for stealing food, so show him some mercy. Pickpocket the guard to retrieve the key. Wait right here. Uh, obviously. I believe she's moved on, Albedon. Um, I think the role you're looking for is uh, or manager of influencers and content creators. Um, but... Yeah, she's got it. Hmm. 
I'm assuming it's the eagle sight that allows me to to see which guard has the key. There we go. So in theory I can use one of those... Um, actually, yeah, this seems to make the most sense. Or does it, actually? Um, I think I should be able to climb a wall to get this guy. Yeah, trippy do. I mean, so one of the things is the, the game actually is built to um, to sort of get people to alert the guards if you steal too much. I think there's uh, probably it's just there's some prob positive probability for any theft that generates a uh, um, felt like the assassins were there to assist the poor and trampled on, not to get protection. Exactly, just equal. Like it's 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 always felt like a very weird mechanic to me that you could actually steal from regular citizens. Um, now, I mean, this is the big thing though, right, Jess? I mean, the, the way that you can sort of justify this decision is that not everyone that you see on the streets, especially in a city like Constantinople, um, not everybody is necessarily the poor and downtrodden. Okay, like, so something like this, you know, you're not able to steal from these people. Um, these people who are reasonably well-dressed, right may not necessarily be the poor and downtrodden um so uh but yeah so ricky guitarist has got it here is that there's no distinction made between stealing from people who are obviously poor and uh people who are not um and people who are uh you know are, are wealthy not that the wealthy are necessarily any more deserving of um of theft but <laughs> i will return to the merchant i robbed and show him the same kindness. After you have cleared your conscience, amico, consider joining our cause. To be an honest man, one needs honest work. I would be honored. Saul. All right, 720. I don't think that's. Uh, I don't think that's going to be enough. Save the citizens in danger to convince them to join your ranks and recruit new assassins. The faction challenges unlocked. Romani faction challenges unlocked. Assassin faction challenges unlocked. Oh yes, that's right. Mercenary faction. Ch the more you play the game, the more things get get unlocked. Um. Let's see what's on the map. So, um, I don't think I have enough to make some money. I don't know if this is... I think this is a combination of a landmark... Er, so I think I've done the viewpoint, but I probably haven't done the location. Um, oh, here we go. I get it now. So there's actually... We're on a totally different... area. Have I played all the games in the series prior to this? Uh, yes, Ricky Guitarist. I'm actually somewhat ashamed to admit this, but I... Um, this looks like there's something waiting for me on Animus Island, but I kind of want to run through. I'm ashamed to admit that uh, I played the first two Assassin's Creed games um, through pirated copies. I believe they are the last pirated games I ever played. Um, so I kind of corrected the error and, uh, and made the purchases. Um, so... Uh, 
I'm starting at Revelations just because I've played the other ones. And um, my intention is I don't feel the need to... Um, I don't feel the need to play like all of the... Um, all of the series in order. Um, I'm interested in playing the games I own for sure. Um, but... Uh, yeah, Ricky Gibson. I mean... It, I mean, when I also, like, I can remember, like, when I stopped playing games, like, Steam wasn't quite what it is now. Um, I remember being actually very confused by Steam when I first ran into it, um, simply because, um, like, I had a copy of Half-Life. And I lost the CD, so I kind of thought that, um, I kind of thought that I would, like, I'd just not be able to play it again. And all of a sudden, like, it just started automatically downloading and I was able to play the full thing. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool. Um, not quite appreciating what all of that was. And then, like, so, I mean, around that time, like, oh. All right, screw you. Oh. Um. But yeah, so I kind of remember. Um. Oh. It's like there's a thief I can. Intercept. Ah, damn it. I think I lost him. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay. Um, yeah, I've definitely lost the guy. For No such luck. All right. Uh, where was this saying? So yeah, I mean, I, I can remember piracy being a little bit more of sort of an accepted thing um, when I'd left gaming, and so that was sort of how I, I got back into it. Um, now, it's, it's kind of, it's a little bit like music, right? Where, um, uh, once upon a time, something like Napster or, or you know, LimeWire or any of these sort of these products um like that was the only way you could get digital music um and you know buying cds was a very old-fashioned way of sort of getting that that sort of thing um oh interesting I completely forgot about all these these different things. I mean, I think all of this was in Assassin's Creed 2 as well, but... Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's... Um, like, when I got back into gaming, it was maybe a little bit more kind of... Like, this is just sort of how I knew how, how you could play certain games. Um, and then I, I sort of realized what it was a bit you know, what it was like in the modern time. And I mean, the, the prices were right, too. Like, there were so many games that I could buy on sale. And again, because I had this wonderful backlog of several years of games, which I'd never played. Like, I could get a lot of them for a song, so... Arkadashian, you look distracted. Quite. I have a lot on my mind. Someone in this district is funding a campaign to get us arrested. How so? Well-placed bribes to Ottoman guards. Tipping them off to our actions. We do not want a conflict with our hosts, but we are not keen to surrender to them either. Do you have an idea where this money is coming from? I hope to find out today. Would you care to aid me? I will make it worth your while. Theming has grown more difficult due to an increasing snitching. Beta snitch to lead you to the source of the money funding him and then eliminate the loot at the so and loot the source. Using a thief group, lure the benefactor from his security zone before killing him. Uh, 
Excellency, how can I help? We know that the Ottomans were paid a large bribe today. We are going to steal it. Once that happens, someone is sure to send an urgent message back to the money source. Follow the messenger, and we will have our man. I'm kind of curious what that map, what that icon is. Oh, for fuck's sake. I don't know why my mouse sometimes triggers um, some scrolling, but it's scrolling down my chat, which is a little unfriendly. A herald. Oh, I think it's, um... I think this is one of the people I can, um... I can sort of pay off to, uh... To stop, um... To sort of lower my, my criminal rating or something like that. like the wind. I'll give them something to think about. Thieves will follow you anywhere, press shift, and they will lure nearby enemies away. Well, fuck you, dude. Um... Hello, Megalonix. Okay, so it says I need to lure the guard away, but it's not clear what guard they're referring to. Or maybe I'm just too dumb for it. Okay. Something tells me I don't have the thieves anymore, but that's fine. I'm not too worried about 100% sync on stream, so... Come on, game. Don't be like that. Oops. <laughs> yeah, I still need to get used to controls. <laughs> what did you miss in the last 10 or so, Vanguard Master? Um, me playing the game poorly. There's not a whole lot that you missed, to be honest. All right, one more try, and we don't seem to have any um, any thieves left, so that's going to be a, a challenge, I suppose. <laughs> well, that's what I get for robbing my cover.
See, if I was designing this, I would have made the guy turn around in the alley. Okay, you don't fucking learn, do you, Agito? Alright guys, I'm taking a quick break. I need to go to the bathroom. You can take 10 minutes to think to yourself, Agito, and uh, maybe when we get back I can deal with less backseating. So, I mean, I know it's funny to talk about old things that happened with backseaters, but I'll be honest with you guys, like, I do, um, I do end cast early because of stuff like this, so. Uh, it actually is, I'm doing my, I'm resisting the urge to just call the cast right now, to be honest with you. Because it's one thing to, it's one thing to have to deal with backseating, but the fact that it's a game that I can't alt-tab out of, and the fact that I've had to deal with it twice now, on my own, um, it doesn't make it fun for me, and I don't particularly like, I don't think I cast well when I have to deal with stuff like this, and I don't, um, it isn't fun for me, and I don't think I do my best casting when, uh, when I'm, I'm kind of in a, in a state like this, so. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Never mind me. What are you doing here? I told you to keep an eye on those soldiers. Forgive me, Halim Bey, but thieves have stolen the bribe. What? How did they know? I'm not sure. If our contacts in the Ottoman ranks do not get their money, we do not keep our special relationship intact. But what could I do? Nothing, obviously. You're just a worm. Now get out of my face. It is an insult that I should... to gain so little. Uh... Keep your eyes open for those sneaky thieves. They may be coming for us next. 
This is kind of dumb that I actually need to use thieves for this, but... So, <laughs> alright, well let's pull them away from the thieves and then we'll hire them, I guess. This is turned clowny. But Damn, I am losing him. Guess it's because I'm not listening to all this really good advice I'm getting from people, huh? My knowledge of history helped my experience in this game so far. Um, Jeff, I think in some ways it's a tough call. Um, all right, well, so much for that. Um, I think one thing that it's done is it's actually motivated my interest in the game. Um, so, for instance, Assassin's Creed 2. I love the Renaissance as a time period. Um... Um, hopefully I'll be able to talk about the mechanic that actually is kind of disincentivizes me from doing this. Yeah, Templar Awareness, which is actually just bringing up now. Um, but I think one of the things that sort of, um, so it, it sort of motivated an interest in this game, which is, I think is actually important in its own right. Um, because there's a lot of games that come out. There's a lot of like AAA games like this that come out. And so you need something to actually, like it's weird, like a game that should be sort of like a everybody's played this one kind of. Um, um, like once upon a time, a game like this, it should have been like everybody has heard of or seen it. And yet now, like I've never played a Fire Cry game, even though they're very inexpensive and you know, there's now four of them plus sort of the, the different offshoots like Blood Dragon or something like that. Um, I'm able to, I think I'm able to appreciate some elements of it because of, um, like when they make differences from, uh, how do I put it? Like, from history, like when they very clearly make a decision. And I think they sort of say there's a, a story reason for this. There we go. All right, now I need to use these guys to distract the guards somehow, but it's not 100% clear to me. So I think that actually adds something to the game. I, they said there's a story reason for it, but I'm not 100% clear on what that reason is supposed to be. Um, so I don't want to call assassins. I want to use my... So I'm just going to take a quick second on the web browser.
Okay, I think I get it. Yeah, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> God save me. Stay your hand and You know what? I'm just going to lose the the fight. You know what? I'm sorry to do this, guys. It's uh, it's not actually working for me. Let's find somebody to host tonight. So, special shout out to two people in particular I'm thinking of who contributed to the abrupt ending of the stream. I was hoping to have two good casts tonight, but... Um, I think it's better that I just quit while... Well, I'm at it rather than drag this out any more than, than necessary. Let's... You know what? Uh, MD's doing a birthday stream, so let's host him.